O-rings, 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 O-rings. Also, spring. But mostly O-rings. If you watched the end of my assembly guide for the bays, you would have noticed that the pusher has a terrible air seal into the barrel. Before I assembled this thing, I put my finger over the end of the pusher and tried to push the plunger rod into the plunger tube. It had a perfect air seal. But now that it's fully assembled, there is no air seal whatsoever. So the only O-ring that I didn't test at the time was the push O-ring. So here is one of the spare push O-rings. I'm just going to try to find one that matches it in size, but is a little bit thicker. That looks like a pretty good start. Possibly the one smaller than it, if we stretch it over, if that's too big. I'm going to try to remove the pusher O-ring from inside the magwell rather than disassembling the whole blaster. The flare just comes off if you give it a pull. And if we get a flathead screwdriver, should be able to get up in there and remove the O-ring. Okay, I actually found that I had one of these little hooky tools. That was much easier to get the O-ring off. Okay, while I was able to get the O-rings off with that little hook thing, I cannot get the other one on because of how deep the magwell is. So I'm going to have to take the whole blaster apart. Alright, I'm going to remove the priming handle on this side of the blaster only. I don't think the other side of the blaster actually has to come apart. Just this side needs to come off. Now I need to undo that, 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 and that. Need to remove, well I need to loosen the top and bottom Picatinny rail, the cheek rest. Need to remove the mag release and one side of the safety and the AEG grip. First I'll take off the AEG grip. Don't have to remove these side ones, they just tap into the shell itself. Gotta now loosen all of these screws. Now I've got to remove the safety switch and the mag release. Don't lose the little detent or the spring that click in place when you turn the safety. And likewise, don't lose the screw or the spring for the mag release. Uh, there are two more screws at the back. Okay, so once you've undone all the screws and loosened the Picatinny rails enough so that the lip is not sitting on anymore, you can split the shell apart. So now if we take a look at the size of these O-rings. Looks like it's the same exact size, just a bit thicker. So let's chuck this on the pusher and then test the seal. That's still very loose going in. I think that's too small. So in this O-ring kit, the one that was the same size as their one was this one. I jumped straight to that one and that was too big. So I'm gonna go this one for both. That's much nicer, much nicer. I can feel it as I push into the barrel, trying to push the barrel forwards. So there we go, let's put the shell back together. So when you put the barrel back in, make sure it's sitting in line with this plastic here. Even though it has this groove on the barrel 
and that grub screw should line up with that groove it just it doesn't seem to do that they've got the tolerances wrong on making this barrel I'll do the spring last but let's just get the shell together The cool thing about the pick rails sitting on a little ledge where they mount, it actually hold the front end of the blaster together temporarily for me. I'll just replay a little bit of my assembly guide to show you which one all of these pins go in. So there's three different sizes of these posts in terms of how long they are. Short one, long one, medium one, long one, long one, and two medium ones at the back. Now we just put the mag release, safety, and motor grip back on. Then we can test the blaster. So what you do is you push this through into there, turn it over. From here you take your spring, put it in this side, push it down in there, and then you take your mag release and you push down and you put one of these screws in. Alright, after wrestling with the AEG motor grip to get it on, grab a washer, grab your bolt. Grab your allen key and you'll find a hole inside which you just tighten the motor grip on with. I think it might be easiest if you have the blaster up that way as you try to put it on. Sweet. So now I just need that screw. Okay, with the blaster back together, if this has worked, we should see higher velocities than 150 to 160 feet per second. Two hundred and eight and 190. I think perhaps you could probably go a little bit tighter on the back o-ring. That feels like it's sealing though. Okay, so it has like a three second air seal now instead of none. Listen to it as I fire it next to the microphone. Yeah, so maybe two second air seal up from none. And we've gained about 50 feet per second. So now I wonder if we can cheat of getting the spring out and putting the stronger one in. If I just do these two screws at the back, maybe loosen these as well. Might be able to get that spring out and swap it out. Okay, let's get something to pry the back open. There we go. So if we try this open a bit more, it's coming out. One spring. So now, we'll try and put this one in. I think I will take these all the way out. little 
bit. There we go. One of these nuts has come out at the back that holds the cheek rest in place. So I'm just going to pry the shell open and use this tool to position it. Precision. So now just these two screws at the back. Okay, theoretically this should be shooting even harder now that we have the upgraded spring in. There's 253. And 241. So I've gained about 50 feet per second just by stepping up a spring size. There are of course even stronger springs like a 2.0 and I reckon that'd get you above 300 feet per second easily. It's got a massive plunger tube in this thing and I don't even have a perfect air seal yet. All I've done is given it maybe a two second air seal over none at all. Despite the massive air volume, I think what's holding this blaster back is that the springs that come with it just come nowhere even close to full compression. With the stock spring or with the 1.7 spring that I've installed now, you can look in through this tiny hole where there's a sling mount and you can actually see when the blaster's cocked. Those are still loose as and nowhere close to full compression. So what you could do is get, say it's just some barrel material like this and you'll probably need like a length like that and just shove it in the back of the blaster behind the spring. Speaking with someone who has used custom made springs for this thing, they were able to get it to 450 feet per second with a 2.0 spring that's sized correctly. So definitely a lot of performance here to unlock. You just need to first improve the air seal and then get your spring to full compression. Anyway guys, that's my attempt at upgrading the ZWQ S100S base. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing what you guys make out of this blaster.